What's up guys? For this test I wanted to push Blackmagic Raw a little bit further and try less than optimal conditions. The manual says the optimum ISO for the Ursa Mini 4K is 400, but for the 4.6K in the Pro, it's 800, and using ISO 1600 may introduce some visible noise, so I try to really never use it. I tried to keep this as controlled and scientific as I could. The lighting could be better, but times when you don't have much light is probably the only time you'll be using ISO 1600 anyway. So as we start to look at these, there's definitely some noticeable noise, but the question I'm more concerned about is whether or not it's usable. Since I really never use ISO 1600, I'm not sure, I don't really have too much to compare this to, but I mean, I, I, I'm pretty impressed with how good this looks um, in all of the codecs, just using the, the Ursa Mini Pro in general. Just at the 4.6K, I think it looks really good. Um, like I said, there's obviously noise there, but in terms of it being usable, I think that it, it's definitely a usable option. You obviously always want to light the scene as best as you can and be more prepared in that situation, but sometimes, especially for documentary kind of stuff, you just don't always have that luxury. So just knowing that I have 1600 as a choice, because I feel like in the past I've just never even wanted to, because I've seen the noise and, ha and how kind of crappy it can look, but now the fact that I'm going to probably be shooting most stuff in Blackmagic Raw, just because I can, I have the space to to do that um, because of the, the smaller file size, I think it makes it a much more viable choice in certain situations when you just don't have that light and you are trying to capture a story and you have to be able to sometimes on the spot just kind of compromise. And using ISO 1600, I think, rather than underexposing a little, I think I'd rather try to use ISO 1600. Here I laid out the highest quality choice for each codec to give a fair comparison of what each can handle. I wanted you guys to see them side by side before we start to pixel peep. At 200%, I was able to notice a couple things. First off, as far as I can see, the Cinema DNG lossless looks like the clear winner in terms of detail, which you would expect. What's easier to see with a grade applied, however, is that the noise in the background looks much more pleasant, in my opinion, than the Blackmagic RAW. There's obviously noise in both, but the Cinema DNG just feels a bit more digital and harsh. I also wanted to do an underexposure test so you can see the noise from the shadows instead of just the noise from the ISO. I'm just going to quickly run through the raw flavors here again, and you guys can decide how you feel about them. I purposely underexposed the wall and only had light on the subject, and it actually retained quite a bit of detail, and really, I was surprised with what I was able to save from this. A little fun fact, because there was less information for the sensor to take in, when I had it set to Q5, it estimated about 211 minutes on a 256 gig card, so it's almost three and a half hours, which is pretty crazy. After doing all of these tests and looking at this footage, it just is getting me more and more excited to be able to shoot in 4.6K now and just really use the full power of this camera because it's at 4.6K, it's really beautiful. I know this one's a little tough to see because it's so dark, but I figured I'd show it anyway. Now looking at the graded version, I want to draw your attention to the area to the right of her hair where, again, I think the noise looks much better with the Blackmagic RAW than it does with the Cinema DNG. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you liked it, please subscribe, like, and leave me a comment. Thanks for watching.